Good afternoon. My name is Idaline Chang. I'm a third, uh, second year medical student at Tulane University School of Medicine. I'll be presenting with Patrick Ryan. These are our disclosures. So for some background, patellar instability is a common condition found in young female athletes. The most common cause of patellar instability is due to sports trauma and predisposing factors are contralateral patellar instability, family history of the injury, and anatomical abnormalities such as trochlear dysplasia. Treatment for the patellar instability can be treated uh, conservatively or with surgical procedure. With first-time patellar dislocation, most patients are treated conservatively with physical therapy or bracing, but as many as 71% can go on to develop recurrent instability. The most common surgical procedure to address patellar instability is medial patellofemoral ligament reconstruction, or MPFLR, with or without concomitant tibial tubercle osteotomy. Um, the MPFL accounts for 50 to 80% of the patellus patella stability and is injured in almost all cases of patellar dislocation. While MPFLR is associated with a good success rate, 4.5% of patients have been found to suffer a subsequent dislocation. And it's also associated with other um, complications such as knee stiffness and patellar fracture. In cases of specific anatomical abnormalities such as trochlear uh, tibial tuberosity, trochlear groove distance of more than 20 millimeters or patella alta, an additional procedure such as TTO can be performed as well. However, this procedure comes with its own complications such as premature osteoarthritis, non-union skin necrosis, and the need for additional procedures to remove hardware. Return to play after MPFLR with or without TTO is traditionally guided by time from surgery, knee range of motion, strength, and subjective measures of knee function. A systematic review found that the average time recommended to return to play is between 12 and 26 weeks. And another review found that return to play is, the median time to return to play is between three and 12 months. Factors that influence an, abilities, an athlete's ability to return to play after surgery include sport played, psychological factors, preoperative risk factors, and a positive apprehension test. So it's important to keep these factors in mind when developing individual return to play protocols. So the purpose of this study was to analyze factors that affect the ability and time to return to play after MPFLR with or without TTO, such as psychological factors, sport played, and positive apprehension test after surgery. And another aim was to determine the average time to return to play. For our methods, we did a literature search based on PRISMA guidelines, and the databases we included were PubMed, Embase, Web of Science, Scopus, Cochrane Library, and CINAHL. Studies were included if they met the following inclusion criteria, mention of MPFLR with or without TTO used to treat patellar instability, mention of return to sport following surgery, mention of a factor that may affect ability or time to return to sport, a peer-reviewed article published in English from 2000 to the present, and studies were excluded if they were systematic reviews, narrative reviews, case reports, or studies that describe patients with additional concomitant procedures, which include but are not limited to MQ, TFLR, and lateral release. The Joanna Briggs Institute critical appraisal tools were used to determine the validity and risk of bias of studies that met eligibility criteria. Data from each included study was extracted, including return to play, which was measured by average time to return to play, percent of those who returned to play, and percent of those who returned at the same or higher level, and subjective scores of knee function. Factors affecting return to play, such as age, sex, sport played, level of competition, psychological factors, and anatomical abnormalities were also recorded. All right, so I'm gonna talk about the results of our study a little bit. Um, so following completion of our literature search and removal of duplicates, we screened 451 studies by abstract alone. This left 49 articles that underwent a full text review followed by 18 that ultimately met our inclusion and ex exclusion criteria. Overall, the mean rate of return to sport following MPFL reconstruction or MPFL reconstruction with TTO was 83.1%, which is consistent with past systematic reviews that display favorable outcomes following these procedures. The mean time to return to sport in our study was calculated at 7.82 months. 
This is slightly longer than averages reported in other reviews that focus on return to sport following MPFL reconstruction specifically. And the difference is likely due to our inclusion of patients who underwent MPFL reconstruction with TTO as well. While combining results for all included studies was a major focus of this paper, there were unique results that warranted recognition as well. First, Crick et al. found that a positive apprehension test postoperatively was significantly associated with a greater failure to return to sport when compared to patients who had a negative test. This suggests the importance of this exam maneuver in determining postoperative knee functionality and an athlete's readiness to return to play. Wagner et al. displayed that patients with type 3 trochlear dysplasia had an unsignificant rise in pre to postoperative Kujala score. This was in contrast to patients with lesser degrees of trochlear dysplasia who showed a significant increase in Kujala score from pre to postoperatively. The negative effects of trochlear dysplasia on postoperative knee function were also affirmed in papers by Hopper et al. and Ambrosic and Novak, which both displayed that higher degrees of trochlear dysplasia were significantly associated with lower postoperative subjective knee function. Finally, perioperative differences between patients were also seen to have an effect on outcomes. As Hopper et al. found that patients with femoral tunneling positioning over 10 millimeters from preoperative anatomic position had a significantly lower postoperative subjective knee score testing. An important purpose of the study was analyzing patients' reasoning for not returning to sport. When combining results for all applicable studies, it was found that fear of re-injury was the most common reason for failing to return to play. This result, along with loss of interest in lifestyle changes um, being the second most common reason, point to psychological factors playing a predominant role in return to sport following surgical intervention for chronic patellar instability. Such an, such an association has already been discussed in return to sport from ACL reconstruction. We also set out to determine how the type of sport played affecting the athlete's ability to return. This table displays how athletes from different sports fared in their ability to return to play to the same level or higher after MPFL reconstruction with or without TTO. The blue arrows point to sports with the lowest percentages, while the yellow arrows point to sports with the highest percentages. As you can see, high intensity or pivoting one and two sports, like soccer and volleyball, had a very low return at the same level, at 40.7 and 26.7% respectively. This is in contrast to lower intensity sports, such as lower intensity or non-pivoting sports, such as cycling and gym and fitness, that displayed return at the same level percentages of 71.4 and 66.6% .6 respectively. No prior studies focused specifically on this relationship, but the difficulty of returning to pre-injury level of sport after orthopedic intervention for major injuries has already been documented as a rate as low as 53% has been reported for athletes following ACL reconstruction. To close, our systematic review displayed that an athlete's ability to return to sport and regain knee functionality are affected by an array of factors. Fear of re-injury, participation in pivoting one or two sports, and a positive post-operative apprehension test were all associated with decreased ability to return to sport following MPFL reconstruction with or without TTO. Further, high degrees of trochlear dysplasia and increased distance of femoral tunneling from anatomic position were associated with decreased patient subjective knee scores. This information can be used to build future studies on the dynamics affecting return to sport and knee function following MPFL reconstruction with or without TTO so that surgeons can better advise their patients on expectations following surgery. Here's a list of our references and thank you for listening to our presentation. Any questions? In, in the studies that you, you saw, were patients excluded if they were non-compliant or not as compliant as they should have been with physical therapy and rehabilitation? Yeah, so in some of the studies, like I think overall we had close to a thousand patients like total in the studies, but um, I would say about 100 to 150 of them were removed because they didn't have continuous follow-up. So they either weren't complying with the care or um, they just didn't see their positions again after that. Mm -hmm.